What are you using your freedom for? So the scripture that that um, that that brought this topic to mind was a scripture in, in Galatians, Galatians five, right? And um, in Galatians, you know, if you guys read the book of Galatians, chapter one, two, three, you know, um, Paul is hitting, you know, on major points. He's talking about if I need to be circumcised, you know, then you know I'm not, you know. If you need to be circumcised, like, what are we doing here? We were saved by the grace of God, meaning we didn't have to do anything to, to be right with God, to be forgiven of our sins, to enter this new covenant. So how can we try to continue it in this new covenant by trying to still live like Jews under the old covenant, under the law of Moses, right? So he's hitting on that, and then he touches on something um, powerfully, you know, very powerfully. Now, a lot of the stuff that he talks about in Galatians, you know, it's stuff that we can, we can, for the most part, we can apply that stuff to our lives as believers in 2020. Um, however, um, it was it was something that they could relate to in a major way because the people he's talking to were people who used to be under the old covenant, under the law of Moses. So he's took it, he's talking to Jews from Israel who were under the old covenant and were used to telling people to to clean themselves doing these rituals to present this and, and the priest was going to present that to uh, be circumcised to do this to not do that right to not you know walk with this these people to not eat with these people right so Paul is addressing these people now if you're if you're like me you were raised in the United States, and you were raised, you know, from the from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and up. So I don't think we can really relate to a lot of the stuff that's, that Paul's writing to people who tried to go back to the old covenant under the law of Moses type of lifestyle, type of religion, right? We can relate to trying to um, do things by our own strength, trying to do things by our own ability, but we can't really relate to trying to go back to the law of Moses because you and I have never been under the law of Moses. We're Americans. Let's, you know, let's, let's be honest, right? We don't understand that. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. All right, so here's the scripture. I want to read this scripture with you guys. It's Galatians 5.13, okay? And I usually read the New King James Version um, or the ESV during my own reading time and my own study time. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the New King James one here. All right, so... It says, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, right? But through love, serve one another. So this is one of those verses that definitely applies to us, that we can definitely relate to because we have flesh, because we have been set free by the power of the gospel, by the blood of Christ, and we have been born again and have become sons and daughters of God. The Bible says that we have been set free from the bondage of sin, that we are no longer bound to sin, that we are now slaves of, we are to be slaves of righteousness, right? And we can put to death the desires of the flesh by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So we are, we, we are now free from sin and we are now free from our past sins and the wages of them. And we must continue in this faith. We must continue following Jesus. Jesus said, abide in me, keep my word remain in me, right? So we must continue in that to see the final promise, to see salvation as it's stated in the scriptures, right? Um, kind of like, you know, if, 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 if you think about the children of Israel who were delivered from Egypt, 
right? It was an amazing testimony. A lot of us have, have amazing testimonies, right? A lot of us, you know, we can say we were delivered from, you know, drug dealing. We were delivered from robbing. We were delivered from prison. We were delivered from jail, from stripping, from prostitution. Uh, we were delivered from being promiscuous, um, from drugs, from alcohol, um, things like that, right? Um, and it's powerful, you know. I love hearing testimonies um, that have fruit, you know. I love hearing testimonies of people, you know, when, when they tell me all they used to do who they used to be, and I can see in their current lives that they no longer live like that anymore. You know, that's when a testimony has power, when um, there's fruit to your deliverance, right? Um, so I know a lot of us have a lot of testimonies, um, beautiful testimonies, um, but just like Israel, when they were delivered, right? Who, 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 who has a testimony that says, you know what? <laughs> God did all these miracles, these signs, these wonders, all these amazing things. He even sent plagues on the people who were keeping us bound. He even killed their firstborn. And then he brought us out and he even parted a whole ocean. He parted an ocean and let us walk through it as if it was dry land. And then the people who were going to catch us, who were running behind us, they actually died. They actually drowned. They saw the power of our God. You know, there's people, the Israelites had that testimony. That's a power testimony. I don't have that testimony, you know, and, and, and all of us don't. You know, if you're alive today, you weren't a around back then. So we don't have the powerful testimony, but that's an amazing testimony, right? Now, imagine having this testimony because God has promised you a land that you are yet to have and live in. And it's going to be this amazing land and he's going to make other people jealous of you. And they're going to like ask themselves, why are they so blessed? Why are they, their livestock like this? Why, why is their fruit like this? Why are they so healthy? Why are they blessed? Oh, it must be the God that they serve, right? And Israel was supposed to be this light, this witness to the rest of the nations about their God, our God. The same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is our God. Amen. So imagine having such a great, powerful testimony and never making it to the promised land, never seeing the land of promise, even though God did all those things for you and set you free and kicked and completely cut off those shackles and chains and completely just embarrassed the people who were after you and did all these miracles and sent all these plagues and killed their firstborn and parted the sea and you still didn't make it to the promise because you used because they used their liberty for something else other than what it was supposed to be used for. And that's the message for us today, guys. In, 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 in the new covenant, under grace, in Christ Jesus as Christians in 2020, we have a freedom that Jesus paid for. We have a freedom that Christ has given us, guys. Freedom from sin. Freedom from the powers of darkness, freedom from the wages of sin, freedom from the curses of the law, freedom from eternal punishment and the wrath of God. But God is saying to us this today. He's saying, only do not use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. That's the temptation that you and I have every day is going back to the flesh. Because even though we're not in the same place we used to be, we're not in the same exact lifestyle that, that we used to be in, we still have a flesh to, that we can actually serve. Instead of serving God, Christians have the ability to serve their flesh. And guess what happens when we serve our flesh? Just like the children of Is Israel, even though God promised them amazing things, even though God delivered them and gave them freedom, guess what? They served their flesh and they never saw the promised land. Now the people, the Israelites, after them in the next of the next generation, they saw the promises. 
But the ones who use their liberty for the flesh, the ones who did not continue in the ways of God, who did not continue believing God and having works that proved their faith in God, they didn't see the promised land. And this was under a covenant that was much less amazing and powerful as the covenant that you and I are in. And that should say a lot. What do you guys think about that? Because that's that's pretty big. That's major. That says a lot. What do you guys think about that? Stephanie said, yes. What's up, Stephanie? Bless you. Samantha said, thank you, Jesus. Stephanie said, amen. Isaiah said, amen. Come on. What do you guys think about what I just said? What do you guys think? What y'all think? Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So using our liberty, right, for the flesh, to serve our flesh, will get us, right, to not seeing the blessings and the benefits of being free. <laughs> right? <laughs> Imagine this. Imagine being somebody who was serving 30 years, life in prison even. And somebody came and somehow, some way, they worked you know, something out. They did something. Somehow, they got you out of prison. Right? Imagine they got you out of prison. You're serving 30 years, life in prison. They got you out of prison. Now you are officially certified as free, a free man. You are free. You are no longer a prisoner. Imagine that. Just think about that, right? And then you say to yourself, oh, man, I'm no longer serving 30 years in prison. Oh, I no longer have life in prison. I'm no longer going to die in a prison cell with these ugly guys all around me. Wow. I no longer have to eat these nasty noodles and peanut butter and tuna and cheese whiz and all this stuff. I'm free. Oh, man. Let me take advantage of the fact that I'm no longer in prison and let me try to get the hookup and find out how I can come up real quick and sell these drugs and, you know, send and deliver these packages and come up real quick because I've been missing this money. Let me take care of the business that I've been wanting to take care of for a long time, right? Let me take care of these things. Let me go ahead and exercise revenge on the people who landed me in prison. Let me exercise revenge on the people who told on me when it was none of their business to tell on me about my crimes. Let me take care of business and, and, and go see the officers who arrested me and who lied about me on the stand. Let me take care of this stuff and take advantage of the fact that I'm now free and I'm able to move a different way. What if this happens, guys? What if this happens? And then you go and kill this person. You go and hurt that person. You go and threaten this person. You go and sell these drugs. And now you're doing all these illegal activities that are the same type of activities that landed you in prison in the first place. Number one, it's obviously you're not a wise man. You haven't learned your lesson. Number two... It's obvious that you don't cherish and appreciate it. And I'm really thankful for your freedom and for the mercy that was given to you. And number three, it's pretty obvious, right? It's pretty obvious that you are doing the wrong thing with your freedom. And that's what this scripture is saying right here in Galatians. Amen. It says, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty only to not use liberty. As an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. You're going to go right back to prison if that's what you do. 
you got free from a 30 year or life sentence, you go back to doing illegal things, you're back in prison. Who do you blame? The police? Who do you blame? The you know, state attorney? Who do you blame? The judge? Who do you blame? The jury? The strangers who just saw the obvious evidence and just voted against you? Who do you blame? You know, that's 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 crazy, right? That's crazy. Amen, Steve. Read what Steve R R Richmond said. That's good. That's good, Steve. Amen. Amen. So I say all that to say this. Have we started confessing our Christianity, confessing that we're free, confessing that we're anointed with the Holy Spirit, confessing that we have authority over demons and sicknesses, confessing that we are the light of the world, confessing that we are going to enter God's kingdom one day and have amazing things and see amazing things, that we're going to even see houses or mansions or big rooms in the kingdom of God, and we're going to see paradise, and we're going to live with the Lord forever. All right, you know, don't we find ourselves confessing all these amazing things that we see in the Bible? Confidently, boldly, right? But then we start, we start doing things. We start walking in ways that don't really match up with our freedom, with our liberty. Oh, I'm no, I'm no longer a sinner. Oh, I'm no longer bound to sin. Oh, I'm no, I'm no longer a junkie. Oh, I'm no, no longer a dope boy. Oh, I'm no longer this. Oh, I'm no longer a cheater. I'm no longer a liar. You know. And then we start using this liberty. And then we start listening to these teachings, these doctrines, this different type of theology that talks about Jesus and his blood and his body and the cross. So we think it's safe to listen to it. But then it starts giving you kind of, you know, insinuating little things here and there and kind of making you feel okay with living for yourself and making you feel okay uh, about drinking and getting drunk or making you feel okay about not being sober and smoking and getting high, being okay with dressing provocatively, you showing your, 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 your body, body parts hearts or texting this person and you know lying to your wife lying to your husband and start feeling comfortable okay i'm saved now i'm gonna go to heaven one day that's good so let me live the rest of my life tr to try to get rich let me live the rest of my life just to try to please myself let me live the rest of my life to just do my thing you know just to have fun oh yeah i'm a christian cool i'll show up to church on sunday but from monday to saturday i'm just gonna hang out i'm just gonna you know just do my thing and i think we have realized that there's a big freedom in Christ, but we have mishandled and misstewarded that freedom because now with the freedom that we have, we're actually serving the flesh that produces the sin that is the re which is the reason why Jesus came in the first place. The Bible says that Jesus came to take away our sins. The Bible says that Jesus came because we were sinners. We needed salvation. <laughs> the Bible says that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And the works of the devil in that context is sin, lawlessness, unrighteousness, disobedience to God, the works of the flesh. You know, so I want us to ask ourselves this today. Do we understand how free we are in Christ Jesus? How loved we are in Christ Jesus. How great and powerful the blood of Christ and God's mercy and grace is and his love is toward us. Do we understand that? And if we understand that, let's act like it and not take advantage of it. Because it's a, it's a crazy thing when we tell people we're free from sin, but we're actually serving our flesh. And the Bible says that whoever it is that you're being obedient to, whoever it is that you're serving and submitting to, that's who you are a slave to. That's who you belong to. So we can keep quoting the scriptures that declare we're sons of God. We are free in Christ. <laughs> 
We walk according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. Our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. We can keep quoting these scriptures and act like confessing them is going to change the reality of how we're really living as hypocrites, right? But if we don't change our course of action, our decisions, our words, our actions, our thoughts, if we don't change those things, we're going to be slaves of the sin that lives in our flesh and we're going to be used Using the liberty that Christ gave us to do the thing that led Jesus to the cross. We killed Jesus. Our sinfulness, our wickedness in flesh killed Jesus. If you want to be real about it, it wasn't the Roman soldiers. It wasn't the Pharisees and Sadducees and religious leaders. It wasn't even himself. It says he laid his life down. He gave his life. Yeah, but ask yourself, why did he do that? John 3.16 is very clear, simple, and even little kids in, in Sunday school understand this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him, faith without works is dead, so believes in him and obeys him shall not perish and have everlasting life. So why did Jesus lay his life down? Because of your sin, because of my sin, because we were enemies of God in doing everything contrary to how God has commanded us to do. So we kill Jesus with our sin. And there's so many Christians. That's why I'm doing this Facebook Live. There's so many Christians that are hollering and posting and celebrating the blood of Jesus, the resurrection on Easter, and their liberty and freedom in Christ. I am free. I am a new creation. And they sing these worship songs and praise songs about freedom, but they're using their freedom to disobey the one that they claim they're thankful for, to disobey the one they call Lord and King, <laughs> as if their own sin didn't already lead them to the cross. That's crazy to me. That's unappreciation. That is not gratitude and thanksgiving. And we've, I know we've all made mistakes. We've all, you know, as Christians, we have all disobeyed God's word as whether we've tr tried to obey it, whether we've, you know, gone to discipleship classes and read the Bible and spent time with him and asked him to help us and asked him to teach us and renew our minds, or whether we just sat down, watched TV and sports and talked to people about nonsense all day, went to church or didn't go to church, and all we had was an attendance, all we had was a membership, but no real discipleship and following of Jesus. You know, I, we've all messed up, right? I know I messed up a lot. I messed up big time. Anybody that knows me knows that, you know, I've been to Bible, I've been to Bible college for years, you know, in my first year, my first sec, my my second year in Bible college, getting biblical degrees about God's word, about ministry, about the New Testament. I messed up a whole lot. You know, you can ask people who went to school with me. Messed up. Got kicked out of school my first semester. Came right back. Kept messing up, right? Until I started taking God seriously because I knew that I had this amazing testimony, you know, and, and, and you know, and I was telling people my testimony. God, you know, I was facing life in prison. I shot somebody in 2010. And all the way from 2010 to 2012, I was, I was, you know, fighting my case. And eventually I went to trial and I won trial as a Christian because I got born again in jail. I was telling people my testimony. And after I got free from jail, never stepped foot in prison like everybody told me I would. But I kept trusting God and I never stepped foot in prison. You know, a lot of people think that my testimony is that I went to prison or something like that. No, my testimony is that I never even stepped a foot in prison because of God's power, God's grace, because I became a new creation and he wiped it out as if I never did it. Right. But I got out of there, went to Bible college a few months after, and I jacked a lot of stuff up. Even though I had a great testimony, like the children of Israel, God split the Red Sea for me. I'm special. You didn't even make it to the promised land because you served your flesh on righteous people. You will never see the promises of God. And that's what we don't get as Christians. We think that being under grace means that even if we sin, we will see eternal life. We will see the promises of God. But that's unscriptural. The Bible says in the New Testament that if the people in the days of Noah didn't escape God's wrath, that if the people in the days of, of, of Israel who got delivered from Egypt but never saw the promised land, they didn't see the promised land, they did not escape God's wrath, 
how much more will we not escape God's wrath under a better and greater and more serious covenant? Come on. If you don't think Jesus is greater than Moses, something's wrong with you. If you don't think that God dying for you isn't greater than uh, your, your, you know, your private part being circumcised or a bull and a ram and a goat being killed for you, this sounds wrong with you. Of course, the New Testament is greater because God died for us. How much more serious shall we take it? That's the power of the scripture in Ephesians 5. Don't use your liberty, your freedom to disobey and to live against the one who sets you free. Because just like he set you free, he can take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. Because the Bible says God will not be mocked and all people will be judged by the Lord according to their what? Their works. That's the key word. It's not to their confession, not to their faith. The works. Amen. So that's a very serious thing. And I know I've been preaching about that a whole lot these past few months, you know, but it's something that I'm just seeing. It's being confirmed time and time again. So many believers, whether you're, you're listening to this doctrine, that doctrine, this doctrine, this movement, this denomination, that teaching, this theology, it doesn't matter. There's so many believers who are not taking their salvation seriously. People are claiming they're free, but they're living as slaves to sin still. And people might say, oh, but we're just humans. Listen, man, I'm a human. <laughs> and guess who also was a human? Some people call this heresy, but this is scripture. The Bible says that God became flesh. The Bible says that Jesus was made, came in the likeness of what? Flesh? Of holy flesh? Righteous flesh that couldn't sin? No. The Bible says that Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh. If you believe Mary had sinful flesh, then you can't argue that Jesus didn't have sinful flesh because he was conceived in her and was born out of her with her blood, right? Placenta, whatever, you know, I don't know about none of that. Whatever, you know, umbilical cord connected to him, whatever babies have from their mothers, Jesus had that. He was born as a real human being. Now, this is what makes it not her her heretical. He was also God in the flesh. He was not just a human. He was not just a baby. He was not just a sinful flesh having boy who was under the old covenant. He was God and he humbled himself, leaving heaven, humbled himself, right? And obeyed everything that the law of God demanded for him to obey. And he obeyed everything that the father told him to do and spoke everything that the father told him to say. And he even died for his own creation, you and I. He made humans in his image and likeness. And because humans didn't believe God and believe the voice of the serpent, humans became in the image of the devil. That's why it says, that's why it says that he, the, the, the Pharisees were sons of the devil. That's why Jesus said, you are sons of the devil. You're not sons of God. You're not sons of Abraham. You're not sons of the promises. You're the sons of the devil. That's why 1 John 3. I, I, I dare any of y'all to watch 1 John 3. It says, whoever does these things is son of the devil. Whoever does these things is a son of God. <laughs> it, it, this is 1 John. 1 John. You know, that's at the end of the Bible, like right before Revelation. That's deep New Testament. That's deep under grace. That's deep gospel. That's deep new covenant. That's deep Christianity. I dare anybody try to refute that. You know, it says, don't get it twisted. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let nobody deceive you. He who does righteousness, he who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. It's saying God is only righteous because God does righteous things. So us as humans, as Christians, we're only righteous when we do righteous things. It's saying, don't let nobody tell you. Don't let nobody tell you you're righteous, but you're serving your flesh. That's why in Galatians, it also lists this same chapter, chapter five, it lists the fruit of the spirit. It says, against these, there is no law. Of course there isn't, because you're supposed to follow the spirit. It says, sons of God are led by the spirit of God. And then it lists the works of the flesh. And it says, those who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You might say, oh, I thought we were justified by faith only. No, 
First John in the book of James teaches us. It gives us a whole sermon and teaching. You, understand, you guys understand that? It says, it says, James in First John, it says, faith without works is what? Dead. Right? And, he, and it even compares Abraham to us. It says, Abraham wasn't justified just because he believed God. Abraham was justified because he took Isaac to go kill him because God said, kill him. And Abraham said, oh, shoot, I don't want to kill my son. As a matter of fact, God gave me this son. He is the son of the promise. But if God said it, guess what? I'm going to do it because I'm not going to serve my flesh. I'm going to serve God. So that's the exact example of what real Christianity, not, not hypocrisy, real Christianity looks like. That's what I want to, uh, I'm challenging you. I'm convicted. I will know that. But I want to encourage you to know that there is a possibility. There is an ability. There is a grace to walk according to the spirit. Because the Bible says that these things were written that we may not sin. Again, 1 John. Listen, I challenge anybody to read the book of James, the book of 2 Peter, and the book of 1 John. And then ask yourself, wow, have I been using my liberty to serve my flesh? Have I been using my liberty to thank God for dying for me? Or have I, have, a, have I had a confession without any fruit? Have I had a confession without works? And if I have, then I'm like a lot of Christians in America. So don't feel too bad, but feel bad enough to make a change because it says faith without works is dead. And it says that the son of God, the lamb of God, the lamb of mercy will return as the judge, as the lamb of wrath. And he will judge everybody according to their works. So if our works haven't been matching our confession and our quote unquote faith, then I will make a change because you can lie to yourself. You can lie to other people. You can lie to your pastor. You can lie to your accountability partner or your spouse and definitely me. But somebody we can never lie to, somebody we can never deceive, mock, and manipulate is God. And the Bible says that Jesus has been made judge of all. And when he returns, he will give to each one according to their works. Now, a lot of people might think that that means rewards. But he said, he, the context was negative things. So you can think that because you're a quote unquote Christian, all you're ever going to receive is good from the Lord. But the Bible says, no, no, no. God shows no partiality. See, we think we're favorite uh, favorites of God. A lot of people say, I'm God's favorite. I'm God's favorite. God just blesses me. I'm so favorite. Look, I went to the drive-thru and somebody paid for my coffee. Look, I got a check in the mail. It was $100. Wow, I'm so favorite. I'm definitely going to heaven. <laughs> you know, but the Bible says God shows no partiality. Now, there's blessings, there's promises that come upon those under the those in covenant with God, right? But the Bible says, I don't care if your life is lovely because the Bible says some people, they're seeing, they're seeing, they're getting punished for their sins. But some people, they're not seeing the punishment of their sins yet. Some people might not see their life crumble and fall apart and think everything is good and lovely. You ever seen people die 99 years old, 88 years old, they die still rich? They die still with their wife. They die still in old age, right? There's a lot of people, right, who don't see much wrath in their lives and are not believers and are not children of God, right? Are not living righteously. But I guarantee you that if they didn't live righteously, when the Lord returns and everybody resurrects and everybody meets the Lord and we're face to face with him like, whoa, am I ready or not? I guarantee you they're going to see that they would have rather changed while being here on this earth than trying to make up an excuse in the face of the creator of the heavens, the earth, and the seas, and everything that's in them. I'm talking about the creator of the sun and the moon and the stars. Y'all understand, understand that the sun is what keeps all this going, right? Like The sun is like keeping us from like freezing and all that right the sun right if you get close enough to the sun the sun you're gonna be obliterated like you're gonna be gone melted forever heat furry crazy nothing exists too close to the sun 
Y'all understand that, right? God made that. <laughs> Some people, oh, I don't mind going to hell. I'm just going to smoke and drink and, you know, watch some wrestling, watch some porn in hell. I'm going to hang out with the devil. <laughs> you know, we were talking about that in our in our Bible study on Thursday night. A lot of people think that the devil is like a hangout spot for evil people who did evil things. Right. And heaven is a hangout spot for goody goodies who read books and, you know, knit all day or something like that. Like, no, 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 no. Hell is a place of punishment. So you might think that you're going to get to, you know, play basketball and shoot dice and drink liquor in hell and hang out with the devil. But the devil ain't going to hang out with you because the devil's going to be getting punished, right? You're going to be getting punished, eternal punishment, weeping, gnashing of tears. No, get me out of here. What? Suffering for it says you're going to be burning forever. That don't sound like you're going to get to shoot dice, huh? Play some spades, huh? <laughs> that don't sound like it. And the devil ain't going to rule hell. The devil is the main cause of hell, and he's going to be the main one suffer. What? So I'm just giving this message so we could take God seriously because a lot of times, you know, we, we got so many. Cri cri Christianity in America is, is something else, man. It's a, it's, it's a roller coaster, man. It's something else, guys. And I'm sure it is in a lot of other countries. I'm not talking about here, but I live here. So let's talk about what, what, what we know, right? So my experience here is that it's something else. It's a lot of confessing, a lot of, you know, Facebook posts, a lot of, you know, Instagram posts and all that, right? You know? But, uh, man, are we, <laughs> are we living free from the things that Jesus literally got tortured tortured to set us free from like do you guys understand i'm, I'm gonna get to the comments because i see a lot of comments here and, and i want to talk with you guys i see my brother on here what's up bro alberto costa i see my brother on here clifton cost what's up bro he said solid good teaching amen let's talk about this so many people will fight you they'll beat you up they'll drag you across the mud maybe even shoot you They'll talk hatred to you and want you arrested and given the death penalty. If you ever say something negative or crazy about this country, about our flag, or about people who went to war for this country. You understand that, right? Do you know why there's a lot of people who take this country, the freedom we have in this country, the military in this country so serious? Because there's people who lost limbs, who lost lives, who were tortured, brutally tortured, you know, knifed up, you know, fingernails, private parts, hair pull, the gasoline, crazy torture that I'm even that I'm even listing because I don't know. But it's been so many stories. It's history. People in the military were so tortured by other countries and by enemy land, um, enemies in other lands. Fighting for this country, fighting for the freedom or fi fighting for protection, fighting to keep us safe and at peace and all that, right? People will beat you up. People will die for you to respect America because of all the people who have suffered and died for this country. And we have God who died for us and went through crazy amount of torture, never having sinned. Never even getting, never even being paid for his torture. You know, every soldier, you know, not to, not to downplay it because they did things that I've never done for, not even for myself, especially not for anybody else. But the soldiers were getting paid. The captains were getting paid. The generals were getting paid. They're sending money. They're sending checks to their family back home. They're going out there still, you know, getting fed, partying in the weekend, all that, right? Not downplaying it, but just, just stick with me. G, right? And they were sinners. And I'm sure they were doing bad things too. Killing people, all that, right? Stick with me though. Cheating on their wives, doing drugs across seas. We know about it, but stick with me though. Hold on, hold on. Jesus never sinned in his life. Jesus didn't get paid a cent for dying for 
all of humanity. I don't care how big America is and how many people and citizens America has had, has, and will have in the future. It has never been close to the amount of humans that Jesus died for because the Bible says he died for every person, every human in the entire world, it says. And he didn't earn a cent for that sacrifice, for that torture, for that battle. And he never even sinned. He was completely good and righteous. And how serious do we take his sacrifice and his torture and what he paid the price for overseas, right? Oh, I'm free in Christ. I'm free in Christ. And then we turn around and do the things that led Christ to the cross. That's crazy. Imagine saying, oh, I love America. I love America. I'm an American. Here's the flag. And you turn around and call Russia or some other country and give them intel about the country and, and, and help them to breach security and breach systems and stuff like that. What? You are loyal, right? You, you call them disloyal, unfaithful, right? How are we using our liberty? I'm going to leave y'all with that. How are we using our liberty? Are we really thankful for the one who died for us? Do we really appreciate his blood and his flesh? Amen? Let's read it again. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. What's it saying? We can see clearly in the Bible that it says, obey the commandments of the Lord. And the Lord said, love God with your everything. The Lord said, love people as you love yourself. The Bible says, if you love, you will fulfill the law. The Bible says the fruit of the spirit is love. So what is it saying right here? But through love, serve one another. It's saying, keep God's word. Live righteously. If you're living unrighteously, you're using your freedom for flesh and the flesh Galatians says is contrary is an enemy to the spirit who is the spirit the same Lord who died for you the Bible says now the Lord is the spirit <laughs> Jesus said it's better if I leave because I'm gonna send the comf the comforter the spirit will fill you and then at the same breath he said I'm never gonna leave you or forsake you why because it's his own spirit. He filled. He lives. That's why we're still followers of Christ, even though he's physically not with us. Because the spirit is within us. And that's why it says, be led by the spirit, a.k.a. follow the spirit. Because the spirit is the Lord. But we want to serve the flesh. And the Bible says the flesh is the opposite, contrary, an enemy of the spirit, of the Lord. What are we using our freedom for? What are you using our freedom for? Amen. That's crazy. If you think people need to hear this message, share this video now so that your friends and family can see this because they probably don't like my page. Okay? Like this video. Comment on this video. Let me know what you think. Do you have any questions, any comments? What's going on? Do you guys see where I'm coming from? Does this sound legalistic? Because this is from the New Testament and we're under grace. So if it sounds legalistic, it's because legalistic something legalism, something legalistic has to do with keeping a commandment and a law, and there are still commandments in the new covenant. So if it sounds legalistic, then it's biblical because we are still to follow God's commandments. A commandment is, doesn't mean it's from Moses. A commandment means it's an instruction. It's an order from the one in charge. And if you think that under grace means that God isn't in charge over us and he isn't our ruler and he doesn't give us instructions and tell us what to do things, then you, you know, you, you're not understanding Christianity. The new covenant has commandments. Are they the commandments of Moses? No, they're the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it says we are under the law of the spirit of life. That's why it says he who loves me will keep my commandments. Jesus said that, New Testament. Did Jesus bring the message of, of the world or the message of the kingdom? Did Jesus preach according to the old covenant or the new covenant? The new covenant. That's why people wanted to kill him. If he would have been speaking according to the old covenant, no one, nobody would have had a problem with him. Right? Share it is because there's a lot of false teaching out there that I could, you know, we, we, we could easily, you know, we could easily refute and, and prove to be incorrect. Right. But just share it so that they can get the heart of this. Right. Because, you know, I don't I ain't got time to debate, but I do have time to preach the truth and only the truth should set you free. So, so go ahead and share this. OK, let's talk about it. What y'all think? Jesus said we shall do greater things than he did. Elijah to Elisha, lesser to greater permanence, mortality. Amen. Come on. 
Roshni, what's up? Good to see you, Roshni. Steve said, let's be accountable. We can all be in error at times, but let's keep it in check. That's right. You know, there's no greater accountability than the Bible and then the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, I, I don't care who you are. I don't care what church you go to. I have never had a pastor or I have never gone to a church, a ministry, a conference, an event where I walked in and somebody asked me, have I sinned? Have I been obeying God? Have I been praying? Have I been reading? Have I been fasting? Have I been denying my flesh? I've never been to a, a place like that. But I have opened up the Bible and before reading for 20 seconds, I see that. I'm, oh, <laughs> Accountability. You got to get into the word. If you're not being convicted, you must not be reading. If you're not being convicted, you must not be hearing the Holy Spirit and in relationship with him. Amen. So I understand the Bible says assemble with the saints. We ought to go to church. I understand the Bible does say to fellowship with believers. We ought to get together. I understand the Bible does say that Jesus gave the body of Christ gifts, which include the apostle, the, pro the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, and the pastor. I understand that. I consider myself to be an evangelist. And I teach a lot. I don't know. I understand. I understand that God gave gifts to the body of Christ to equip them for the work of ministry. I understand Ephesians 4. But I understand that if you don't keep yourself accountable with your relationship with God, conviction, conscience, and with what you read in the word of God, it don't matter how many pastors, spiritual fathers you have. It don't matter how many times you attend a church. I ain't never been into a church where people ask me, have I been reading? Have I been praying? Have I been sinning? Have I been obeying God? What have I been doing? Never. Instead, they ask me, hi, y'all. How's the wife? How the kids? Did y'all watch the football game yesterday? What'd y'all eat today? Oh, where y'all going after? That's what they ask you. Oh, you're getting fat. Oh, you're getting skinny. Oh, now it's a nice outfit. Right? That's what they ask you. I've been to a lot of churches where they ask me, dang, Nick. You been gaining weight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's crazy you notice that, but you haven't noticed how I've been growing in Christ, but you haven't been noticed how I've been serving the Lord. And Oh, we're focusing on the flesh, not on the spirit. Oh, we're not really real accountability partners. I'm telling you, you get into the word, you get into relationship with God, you'll have a real accountability and real fruit and real growth while everybody asking each other, oh, why'd you wear this today? Oh, why? All right. Stay in the flesh. We're going to stay in the spirit. Let's grow in the spirit, baby. Amen? All right. Let's see. Steve said, we owe it to God to draw near to him and have the relationship with him that he paid the price for. His yoke is easy when we tell him how we feel. His burden will feel lighter as he strengthens us in our trust of him. He made us kings and... Come on. You quoted too much scripture right there. I love it. I love it. Isaiah. Israel. What you guys think? Steve said, I was that person who messed us on it. Joseph was told to run away from the flesh. My brother said, faith without works is dead. My brother said, 100% flesh, 100% God or spirit. Good stuff. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have a hard time understanding or believing the scripture because I only say it because I read it in the scripture, you know. I didn't get that revelation. I just read it. Paul got that revelation, right? John got that revelation. Uh, Peter got that revelation. James got that revelation. I didn't get that revelation. I just read what they got. And, you know, I believe God enough to believe them because that's his word. Amen. That, that, those are the scriptures that he chose to put in the Bible. There were other scrolls. There were other scrolls found. There were other letters and epistles found. But God chose those to be in the Bible. So we're going to go by those. And those say that God became flesh, that God dwelt among his own creation who still rejected him, who still didn't comprehend him because he was light in the midst of darkness. And he, it says that he came in the likeness of flesh. A lot of people have a hard time to understand that Jesus was tempted. How could he be tempted if he didn't have sinful flesh? The Bible says clearly there is no sin. There is no evil. There is no darkness. There is no wickedness in God. The Bible says God cannot be tempted with evil. So how was Jesus tempted with evil? Because you don't get tempted with righteous things. You don't get tempted with good things, right? You get tempted with evil. You get tempted with sin. So how did he get tempted with sin if he didn't have sinful flesh but pretty flesh? Don't make sense, right? So don't listen to stuff that don't make sense. And he was 100% God. Right? 100% God. Right? Now what? How could he say the Father is in me? <laughs> how, could he, how, how did he say the things that I do, right? If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, 
If I cast out demons by the finger of God, the kingdom has come upon you. Me and the Father are one. Why does it say? The word was in the beginning with God and the word was God. And the word became flesh. Hmm. So John 1 says that. Who do we? Who else do we know that became flesh? Oh, Jesus. So it said that the one who became flesh was in the beginning with God and was in fact God. Oh, that's why Jesus said that he came from God to the Pharisees that didn't understand that. That's why he said to his disciples, he's going back to where he came from. Oh, that's what the Bible says, that he created the worlds. Oh, okay, so it's making sense now. So Jesus was fully flesh and fully God at the same time. Okay, that's why he could teach us, but he could also be our example of what a Christian is supposed to look like because the same flesh he had, we have. If he could do it, we could do it. Why? He said the same works. Why? Because he sent us his spirit. He sent us himself, just like he physically discipled Peter, James, and John. The spirit will spiritually disciple you and I. Let's grow. Y'all share this video, okay? Steve said, let's remember our prayers. God never forget, forgets our prayers. Um, he's um, uh, Amen. Solid, good teaching. Human. Amen. By believing, we become righteous. Without a doubt, God knows us. William said, pray for, for, my, for all my family. Let's pray for William's family. Father, we just um, thank you for William. Um, and we just ask you for his family. Uh, I'm not sure what he's going, what they're going through. We just ask that your will is done in their life. That you draw them to yourself by your spirit. That you reveal the authority and the kingship of Jesus Christ to them. That you lead them to repentance. That you convict them. And Father God, I just ask you that you shower them with your grace. With your love and mercy. We pray for William's family. That everything that is not of your will, that you will remove it and that you will help them to submit to you, bow down to you, and humble themselves because you exalt the humble only. In Jesus' name. Amen. Steve said God disciplines those that he loves. Amen. Amen. You know, when, when a teacher gives you an F, it's so that you can get your, you know, get your butt serious and start studying instead of playing soccer all night, right? You know, if your parent Go, take says go to your room because you did something you wasn't supposed to or he whoops you it's so that you can remember how that pain felt and not want to feel that pain again and next time that a situation arises you'll do what you actually were supposed to do so that you don't get whooped again you know any type of discipline any type of correction is always for the purpose of growing for the purpose of changing aka repentance that's what the bible says in the new testament that god said god disciplines those that are his he disciplines his children you know, God, the Bible says that God's ways are not our way, that God's ways are higher, that God's thoughts are higher. We can't even come close to 1% of how God thinks. And here we are disciplining our children so that they can get in shape and they can learn how to discern good from evil. So that they can learn how to walk upright when they leave our house at 18 or 21 or 25 or whatever. If we are smart enough to know that discipline will help you think things a little longer, think things through a little better, think things through a little longer, how much more wiser is God? And of course he uses discipline. Of course he uses correction. Come on. You know, we forget that. We forget that he's wiser than us. The son of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys, man. I hope this message helps you. I hope this message convicts you. It convicts me. I hope it convicts you. Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit convicts. So if something that convicts you is nasty, ew, why didn't it convict me? Then you must not like the Lord. Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit convicts. Not only of good things. It says he convicts of righteousness. Yeah, he convicts of judgment. Yeah. He convicts of sin. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now you don't want me to teach you. You don't want me to talk, right? You want a you want a preacher who is spirit led, right? You want a preacher who's allowing the spirit to speak through them. So if a preacher is really allowing the spirit to speak through them, how's the spirit gonna sound? Convicting, right? Convicting, edifying, right? Come on, <laughs> come on, guys. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Love you guys, man. Y'all like this video? Comment.
Let me know if you have any questions. I'm scrolling. I'm looking at my laptop right now. If you see me looking to the side, I'm not distracted. I'm looking at the laptop, scrolling through the comments so I can answer any questions or, 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 or you know, interact with you guys. Jesus matured through his life on earth. He, right. Of course, he was learning. The Bible says, let this mind that was in Christ be in you. In the context of it was humility. God laid aside his, you know, God came down to his l little mere creation. <laughs> God, he he humbled himself to, to be, imagine you're God, big God. You created, you know, little stick figures, little men. And imagine you coming down and becoming one of those little stick figures. That's humility. You didn't have to do that. You could just, you could have just wiped us out like you did people in the days of Noah. I, I probably would have sent the fire sooner. To be honest, I'm God, I'm up there. Why would I come all the way down there and be whooped? By the disobedient evil people that I created. I'm, I regret creating y'all. That's, that's what I would have been. I would have felt like, right? I'm not coming down there. Let me send another flood. Let me find a Noah. Matter of fact, let me not find a Noah. Because the, the descendants of Noah still did a lot of jacked up stuff. So let me just wipe everybody out. I might create some super tiger or something. And, <laughs> you know, that, that, that would have been me if I was God. I would just wipe everybody out again and just create tigers and create cool things that were going to obey me. I would have created some robots that would have did righteous things without me having to fill them with my spirit and forgive them of their sins and prophesy for hundreds and thousands of years or hundreds of years and thousands of years and sent David and sent Ruth and sent this person and sent Joseph and sent Mary and sent John the Baptist. Like, I would have did all that. I ain't got no patience for all that. But God does. And that's why we're here. Amen. But that's, that's, that. if I say all that to say this, that's the crazy humility that God has. He became his own creation to save us instead of wiping us out and creating a super duper tiger like I would have. Because I love, I love cats. If you know me, you know I love cats. <laughs> anyway, let me scroll through the comments. Jesus went through school as we did. That's right. Jesus was in Bible college. He was a rabbi. <laughs> he had disciples. He was learning from people in the temple. He opened the scrolls and taught that thing like no other man. Whoa. Who is this guy? He teaches with so much authority. They didn't call him unlearned. They called his disciples unlearned. Remember that. He was a rabbi. He knew, he, he knew the Torah. He went to Bible college. <laughs> he was he was he was there in Bible college, but he wasn't messing up like I did. He was actually, you know, fulfilling righteousness, doing what he was supposed to do. And you guys pray for me because I'm finishing up my master's program, right? I didn't stop at my bachelor's. I, I felt led to to fit to get my master's. So I'm finishing up right now. This is, you know, I got my last few months left. So y'all keep praying for me for my master's program, for me to be diligent about my studies and to to finish you know, correctly and to get it over with. Amen. Israel said, sounds like Jesus. Jesus gives us counsel through his spirit. Amen. Jesus came to fulfill the law. Amen. Two commandments which fulfill the whole law. Amen. Thank you for sharing, Stephanie. Bless you guys. Bless you guys. Love y'all, man. Every, you know, a lot of people are green on here. J Jasmine Williams. What's up, Jasmine? I haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. I hope everybody's doing okay. In the family. Say hi to Akeem for me. Bless you guys. Love y'all. We have the personal responsibility to tune into God and to his word. Come on. Sharpen into two edged sword. Come on. The good fruit of the love of the spirit must run side by side with every gift that. Amen. My, my, my wife said he laid aside his divinity. Israel Watson. He said we got to see that a form of God's grace is given as a forbearance of judgment to get right with God so we can prep ourselves for the last day. We get right now before it's too late. That's right. Roshni said, please pray for my son. Father, we just pray for Roshni's son that you have your way in her li in his life. And we just pray for your mercy for him. And we ask you to, we ask you to do, to do what, what you did in Christ um, when you were walking around this earth. If he needs healing, if he needs conviction, if he needs mercy, if he needs grace. If he needs correction, discipline, whatever, whatever he needs, God, you know what's going on in his life. We just ask you to make it happen. May your will be done in his life 
here on earth as it is in heaven. And I pray that you deliver him from evil, that you will help him to overcome unrighteousness, and that you give him today his daily bread, God, as you taught us to pray, Lord. We just bless him. We ask you to bless him and to deliver him from anything that's not of you, Lord, and, and correct him and convict him if you need to, in Jesus' name, by your spirit. Steve says, sound teaching, brother. God has kept you sober in mind and heard and hopefully drunk in the spirit as I see today. Exciting time. Thank you, Steve. Bless you, man. Good to hear. I appreciate it. Thank you for being encouraging, man. Thank you. All right. Let me see. Any more comments? My wife said a great message, baby. Don't call me baby in public, babe. Don't call, I mean, Samantha. And <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> she said great message, baby. Thank you, baby. He so loved the world. He so loved the world. My, mom, my mom's on here. She's got praying hands. My wife could call me baby on Facebook Live, but when my mom calls me baby or, you know, she uses little nicknames that she used to when I was a kid, it's kind of it's kind of embarrassing. My wife can do that, but my wife, my mom, you got to do that through text. You got to call me, you know, Nick, you know. God will equip us even when we run dry. He has laid aside provision for us in the storehouses. Joseph was rejected by his own brothers, and then by grace, he led Egypt. And saved his own brother. Come on. Amen. All right. I don't see any more comments on here. Right? No more comments? Is that it? Okay. Well, it was good to have you on here. God, on here, God. My mom's laughing. It's true. <laughs> I love you guys. Oh, man. I got a, I got some sun today. I was out, out with my wife. and We've been out working on the lawn and in the backyard and stuff. So, and it was super hot today. So, I got a lot of sun. So, I look kind of burned. But anyway, man, I love you guys. Thank you guys for joining. I appreciate you guys. Share this video. Let your people see it. And take this word seriously. This wasn't, listen, I don't like doing the sermon thing. I don't like doing the entertainment thing. I'm not trying to be on Netflix with some sermons. I'm not trying to be on TV with no messages. I think that's obvious. I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less. So this isn't just another sermon. So don't take it as that. Don't take it as, oh, that's a good word, Nick. Let me move on to the next one. Don't move on to the next one. Don't, don't go to TBN. Don't go to YouTube. Don't go to the next Facebook Live. Just sit. Sit still. Even if you have to replay the video again, just sit still. Think about this word. Go to, go to um, Galatians 5 yourself. Read the context of it and read that scripture we talked about today. Think about it. Your life needs to change. My life, our life needs to change. We need to be transformed. Amen? Christianity doesn't stop at justified by faith. Christianity is about sanctification and good works with our faith so that when he returns, we will have confidence before him, not fear. Sure, we're still going to have fear, but, but it's going to be you know more of a confidence thing if... We know we've kept his word if we've been perfected in his love. That's what the Bible talks about. It says there is no fear in love because love casts out fear. Why does it say that? Because it's talking about the judgment of God. If you've been perfected in love, aka keeping his commandments, right? We talked about Jesus' commandments and how love fulfills that law, those laws. So if when keeping Christ's commandments, aka walking in love, then when he returns, we won't have that fear. But if you haven't been keeping his word, if you've been using your liberty to serve the flesh, you better be scared because it ain't going to be good for you. <laughs> you know, I see people, you know, drinking, you know, I'm not saying, you know, drinking or some, alcohol is a sin. I'm not saying that because that's not scriptural. I'm talking about getting drunk. That's definitely a sin. Don't let nobody lie to you. They want to, if, they, if they're telling you it's okay, they're trying to get you drunk. You know, because they're drunk, they, they're convicted, they want you to sin just as bad as they're sinning, or because you might be a woman, they're trying to get you drunk, take advantage of you. Because, you know, that's, you know, that, that's how, you know, that's how, you know, 
dirtbaggish us guys are, you know? So, you know, don't let nobody tell you that getting drunk is not, <laughs> it's not a sin because if you go to Galatians 5, same chapter, it talks about the works of the flesh and talks about getting drunk and it says you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So I don't know if entering the kingdom of God is in your, you know, next 60 year um, life plan, but it is for me. And if it is for you, you know, definitely, you know, think twice before you get drunk. But anyway, you know, people drinking, people doing things, watching things, talking about things, vulgar jokes, sexual jokes watching sexual things, you know, and it's like, wow, like, you know, I, and, and then talking about, oh, I'm, I'm not scared, you know, the love of God, you know, perfect love, cast out fear, you know, and they start repeating what the worship singers, not the preachers, the worship singers are saying, they're singing about, there's no, you know, there's no fear in love, perfect love, listen, if you get, <laughs> you might want to get your the theology and doctrines from somebody who has shown themselves to know the word, to be able to handle the word of God. Somebody who has shown and proven that they care about learning the word. Of God. You might want to learn the word of God from somebody who, you know, has not only the, you know, has things to back up what they're saying. You know, a lot of people you know, a lot of times we're lazy to read the word ourselves, and a lot of times we're lazy to, to, to or, or, or we're not hungry enough to listen to certain teachers and preachers because they're they're being too hard, too too scriptural. <laughs> Imagine listening to a sermon that is supposed to be based on the Bible, and you switch it off because it's too b biblical, it's too scriptural, <laughs> right? It's it's happening a lot. But this is the thing: so a lot of people like listening to to the worship leaders. You know, sometimes worship leaders preach a little bit before, in the middle, or after their, 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 you know, worship time or their session, their concert, whatever it is. And we, a lot, a lot of us get our theology from that. Don't get your theology from the worship singers, you know, because a lot of times it's that feel good stuff. Oh, you know, I feel so good, <laughs> you know, uh, in perfect love, cast out fear. Don't be afraid, you know, but if you're in sin, <laughs> if you're disobeying the master, the Lord, who's going to return back to his house and make sure and, and see how you steward in his house and how you handle things, you should be scared. If you've been perfected in his love, if you're keeping his commandments and you walk in love in such a way that you don't lie, that you don't steal, that you don't uh, sin again, you know, sin against this person, sin against God, commit adultery, commit for it. If you're walking in that type of love, okay, don't be scared of judgment because you're making yourself ready. The Bible says he's coming back for a church, for a bride that is blameless, above reproach, holy, right? What, what, what is that? Without blemish, without spot, without wrinkle. What is a blemish? You know what a blemish is. The Bible says pure religion, right? Pure religion is caring about the widows, caring about the orphans, and keeping yourself unstained from the world. What do you think that means? No sin, no darkness. The Bible says if you sin, you have an advocate in heaven who will, who, 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 who will present his own blood. And if you confess your sins, he'll forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He's that faithful. He's that just. But it says, if you sin, not when you sin. God has never expected you to sin. He has given you his spirit. He has given you his word. And he has given you the gifts of apostle, teacher, prophet, evangelist, pastor to help you grow in Christ. That's why we're here to grow in Christ. And it says, if you sin, the blood is there. But you must confess. But you must admit you've been sinning. Don't just act like everything's fine and dandy. Amen. Israel just said sin no more. Jesus healed the woman. Jesus healed the man. When he healed the man who, who, who was really jacked up from birth, he said to him, hey, <laughs> you know, don't sin so that nothing worse comes upon you. Oh, shoot, that sounds like a consequence for sin, don't it? Yeah, that was Jesus. Oh, I thought Jesus was grace. Yeah, that's what grace looks like, too. Oh, I thought Jesus was God and God is love. Yeah, that's what God, that's what love looks like, too. Huh? Oh, this sounds different than the than the TV preacher. I know. Why are you watching them? <laughs> I know. Why are you watching them? Oh, they make you feel good. The Bible says in these last times, people are going to look for teachers for themselves who Tickle their ear because they tell them what they want to hear because they want to serve their flesh, but holler freedom. No, don't use your freedom for the flesh because the worship of the flesh, what? Will grant you no entrance in the kingdom of God. That's the Bible. That's Galatians. That's New Covenant, right? 
That's crazy. We're just talking now, but it's, 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 it's good. You know, I think, I think this is worthy of, of talking about and sharing, you know, share this video. There's a lot of you, a lot of your Christian friends think they're, they're, they're right with God. A lot of your Christian friends think they're going to be playing tennis with you in eternity. A lot of your Christian friends think that <laughs> they can listen to certain teachers and just live their life. Oh, my pastor says this, though. I respect what you're saying, nigga. I understand why you're saying it. But my pastor said this is okay. And if your pastor was the one who has been made judge of all, if, the, if your pastor was the one that was going to judge you for all your works, you'll be set. You'll be all right. You'll be cool. Because you're probably sinning the same way they're sinning. And that's why they're saying that to you. Because somebody knows what they're doing. And they don't want to publicly say it's wrong. They want to cover their own tracks, right? So if your pastor was doing it, you'll be all right. But it's not. It's Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus went up to the woman who was caught in adultery. Told her, get up. I don't condemn you. Of course he didn't condemn her. He said, I didn't come to judge the world or condemn the world yet. <laughs> he said, I came to save the world and give the world a chance to get out of condemnation, to get out of being guilty of their sin. That's why it says, he didn't come to condemn, but to save the world because the world is already condemned. Enemies of God, not right with God. But through faith in him, we are justified by that faith and we prove our faith with good works because he said, right, walk in the spirit, be led in the spirit, follow me. Where our faith that works is dead, right? Let your light shine. Light, light is the opposite of darkness. What was darkness? Unrighteousness, sin. Come on. Let your light shine that your good works. Oh, it don't say, it don't, it, it don't, it don't say fruit of the spirit. See, a lot of people be like, that's why it's called the fruit of the spirit and not works of the spirit. And it's called works of the flesh because, you know, you work to do the bad things and, and then the Holy Spirit just does everything and it's just fruit. It just happens. No, no, no. Fruit and works is the same thing. Okay, he said good works. A lot of people like a lot of people look at the word works in the Bible and think it's automatically a fleshly thing. No, good works are from the Holy Spirit working through you, and they only happen when you submit, when you obey, when you humble yourself, when you renew your mind and start agreeing with God and make sure that you start making your decisions according to the Spirit who is in you and what He's saying to you, what He's telling you to do and what not to do. That's good works. Every time, you know, somebody's like, oh, the works are works are fleshy and fruit are spiritual. They're different. It's, it's like, no, no, no. The, the fruit of the spirit and good works are the same. Works of the flesh, bad fruit are the opposite of that, you know? So he said, let your light shine so that people may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. What glorifies God? Good works. What has God wanted from us? Good works. Why? Because he gave us his spirit. What kind of spirit? The Holy Spirit. <laughs> so Peter said, be holy in conduct as your father is holy. As your father in heaven is holy. So Peter said, be imitators of God. <laughs> what? <laughs> so Jesus said, the same works I do, you will do. Did Jesus only heal the sick and work miracles and prophesy and get words of knowledge and preach and forgive people? Is that all Jesus did? Is that all his good works? He fulfilled righteousness. He obeyed the Father. He was led by the Spirit. Jesus had good fruit. So when he says, the works that I do, you will do, don't ever think he's talking about the gifts of the Spirit or, or the preaching or the ministry. Good works are good works, meaning things that are of the light and not of the darkness, things that are righteous and not unrighteousness, things that are of the spirit and not the flesh. Amen. I'm going to get out of here because we, we, we talking too much. He talking too much. Y'all probably not listening. You guys probably making a sandwich. You guys probably, you know, scrolling through Instagram or something. It's late. I'm going to get out of here. 
We're going to leave it as this is. I hope this convicts you. I hope this challenges you. I hope this blesses you. I hope this changes your outlook about your life. How are we using our freedom? We're going to see Jesus face to face and tell him, oh, I got 10,000 followers on Instagram. Oh, I quote your scriptures here and there. Oh, I listen to Christian rap. Yeah. And I got that bass on. Ooh. What? Let me see your works. Hey, cut all that worldly stuff out. Cut out all that fleshly stuff. You focusing on the wrong thing. Let me see your works. Oh, but Jesus, I have a six pack, Jesus. Move aside. Let me see your works. Oh, but 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 Jesus, I I I told everybody my testimony. Testimony, you're still living in sin. What testimony is that? No, 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 Jesus, you don't understand. Let me see your works. Let me see your works. <laughs> See, we think that's heretical. We don't think that's Jesus, but we'll see. All we got to do is read Matthew to John and let's see how Jesus behaved. And if you believe he did that because he had yet to die, he only spoke like that because he was under the law of, the, of Moses and he had yet to shed his blood. If that's what you think, then go ahead and fast forward all the way to Revelation. That's future Jesus. You know, Revelation is future Jesus, you know? That means he's going to do these things because it says it's a book of prophecy. So it will happen that he's going to talk like that. He's going to judge like that. He's going to do those things that are in the book of Revelation. So fast forward. If you think he only did that because he had yet to go to the cross, fast forward all the way to Revelation and see how he's going to talk to us. Oh, church of, oh, you did this good, but I have this against you. Oh, church of this, you have done this. Oh, church of this, I will spit you out. <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, he loves the church. You know, he, he's only going to say nice things to church. God sees us. God sees us as, as Jesus. God doesn't see me. He sees the blood of Jesus. What scripture is that? <laughs> he sees you. <laughs> you know, if you see your own sin, and right now, if I start cussing you out, if I start getting drunk, is that, if I start watching porn right in front of you, you're going to see my sin. So you think that you have a greater ability to be in reality and sober and to see what's happening than God? So you think God's only going to see, God's looking down only seeing the blood of Jesus? Is, is that the theology that, that we've learned? Because that's not in the Bible. The Bible says God will judge every man according to his works. He's going to open up the books of our works. The Bible says that God knows all things. Nothing can be hidden from God. We can't escape from God. The Bible says God will not be mocked. <laughs> You know, a lot, a lot of stuff has been shared and it's been spread and it's so unbiblical. God, God doesn't see me. He just sees Jesus. God doesn't see my sins. He sees the blood of Jesus. God don't see your sins. So if he doesn't see the sins of Christians, how come in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians, one of the two, he was punishing people in the church for taking the Lord's Supper incorrectly, for being drunkards and being gluttons? How come people were getting sick and even dying? How can he discipline his own? It says he disciplines. He corrects. He disciplines. In the same context of sickness, in the same context of death, it says he disciplines his children. Why does it say that if he doesn't see our sins? Come on, man. Let's get real. Yo, he only sees the blood of Jesus. What? So if you see your own sin and my sin and you're saying God doesn't, you, you're saying you see more than God? You're smarter than God? You're more in tune with reality than God? That's nonsense. You can't believe that, y'all. That's crazy to me. Anyway, man, let me get out of here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. I don't even want to talk about all this, but I guess, the, you know, the, the Lord does because, man, Isaiah said, it's not about what your pastor said. His word is not the word of God. Come on. Ah, man. I'm tired. I'm so, I'm all sweaty. I'm all hot. Let me get out of here, y'all. Man, I love you guys. Share this video if you think this is good. I'm probably going to upload this to my YouTube channel in the next couple days. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, do so by going to the link that I pinned on here in the comments. If you want to bless our ministry financially, if you want to give you know, to, 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 to the minister who gave you spiritual things, if you want to give to the minister something according to the word of God um, that says to give to the person who's giving you spirit, go ahead and you know hit the link. Give to our ministry. We need, you know, we need the, the, the resources sources, the finances to do all the things that we're called to do. We, we're called to do a lot of things in jails, prisons, um, evangelism. We want to, you know, bring bring the, the gospel to Charlotte. You know, we ain't trying to pass nothing out. We're not trying to get, you know, give, give glasses and gifts, you know, 
uh, backpacks and, and, and give groceries and all that is cool. All that is cool. That's that, that's godly. That's biblical. God says if, if 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 you see somebody who's hungry, if you see somebody who needs clothing or who's cold, give them a blanket, warm them up, give them some food. You know, that's biblical. I'm not saying nothing against that, but I'm saying for our ministry, we're going to give them the gospel. OK, so if you want to be part of that, donate to our ministry, the link below. Uh, we want to evangelism. We want to have classes that disciple people new converts, old converts who need discipleship um, with teachings like these, you know, with curriculum. Um, we're going to give a lot of Bibles to, to, to the inmates in, in the jail in Mecklenburg. Once this whole COVID-19 allows us to get into the jails. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to bless our ministry, go ahead and do so. There's uh, other than that, free content all over YouTube. Go to our YouTube channel, go to our blog. Um, if you want our free prayer shirts, they're available on the website. All the links are on there. Um, follow me on Instagram. The link is on there. All the links are on there. What other links we got? Oh, um, Bible studies. Listen, first of all, let me be real with y'all. First of all, I know what we got. We got a few viewers still. Okay, so check it out. <clears throat> We have two hour long, two hour long live interaction Bible, online Bible studies every Tuesday night at seven, every Thursday night at seven. Two Bible studies. I don't know a church who does that. Let me just be real with you, okay? And it's completely free. Anybody could join. I answer your questions, we read the text, we get into it, we sometimes we move away from the text and we get into whatever topic that 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 the Lord leads us to that helps us grow, that really disciples people and equips the believer. Okay? We do that two hours twice a week. Don't know any church who does that. Then on Saturday nights, we have our meetings, usually, right? We usually have our meetings every Saturday night for like three hours, right? Worship, prayer. And a teaching just like this in person, right? Because of the whole virus thing, we haven't been able to gather physically. But we do this, right? We do this online now. That's why if you haven't noticed, every Saturday night, I'm going live on Facebook to do these teachings. These teachings have been as long as almost two hours every Saturday night. So that's a two hour of straight teaching, straight preaching the word of God. Don't know any Sunday service that's that, you know, usually the preach is 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and then all the other stuff is the worship and the filler and the announcements, right? So we do that every Saturday night, y'all. And then every Tuesday night, two hours of Bible study. Every Thursday night, two Bible. I don't know any ministry that does that. Listen, and, and, and this is, I say all that not to boast, right? But I mean, we're supposed to do that. We're, you know, I'm supposed to be serving the Lord. I'm supposed to be teaching his word. So that's what we do. But I say all that to say, we're doing we're, we're doing things that are helping people grow. So if you want to sow to our ministry, don't think like this. Oh, I usually give to the church because the church has staff to pay to pay to pay. The church has lights to keep on. You know, a lot of pastors like we don't the lights don't keep on them don't stay on themselves. You know, that's not the reason why we give to keep the lights on. You know, the reason you give is not to keep the lights on. The reason you give is not to keep, um, you know, the coffee, you know, and the foyer. The reason you give is not to, you know, <laughs> is not to help your pastor go to Mexico every every summer and go to Hawaii every winter. That's not the reason you give. It's not to keep the light. It's not because they have a building. So a lot of people don't like giving to these ministries online because they're like, oh, there, you don't have a building. You know, there, there's no bills you're paying for. It's, it's like. That's now you don't give because a ministry has a building. Because first of all, the buildings in the book of Acts were houses. You know, people were gathering the houses and they were still giving, like they were selling their whole land and giving it. <laughs> so that's not why we give. We give because it says, whoever is giving you spiritual, it's your duty to give materialistic, right? So we give because it was given to us. That's why the Bible says, be givers and cheerful givers. If you're not give, getting the word taught to you and you're still giving, I'm sure you're giving kind of like out of a burden, but you're not giving rejoicing because you're like, man, I just wasted an hour and a half here in church. I didn't learn nothing. But let, let, let us give this, you know, let me give this to them because they need to keep the lights on. No, that's not that's not giving with joy. That's not giving with, you know, uh, uh, with joy. And that's not that's not giving 
out of a pure heart. When you give happily, it's because you're like, man, this word was so good. Man, lives are changing through this ministry. Man, people are getting saved through this ministry. Man, there's a lot of fruit I'm seeing in my life and my walk through this ministry. That's why we give. So it said, <laughs> come on. So it's not about, oh, this ministry doesn't have a building to keep the lights on for. That's not why you give. The Bible says, give to those who are giving you the word. That's New Testament, right? That's that's New Testament. So if you guys want to get to the ministry, the, 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 the link is right there. It's a legal ministry. That means when you give through PayPal, your, your email is going to be on there and we're going to send you um, the tax deductible, whatever. My wife does all that. We're going to send you whatever you gave to our ministry so that you don't have to have to pay taxes at the end of the year for whatever you give to a 501c3, to a nonprofit tax exempt organization ministry like ours. Okay. So if you want to give, if you want free content, um, YouTube blogs, and definitely sign up for our free live online Bible studies because we get it in. All right, we get it in. I'm going to start putting uh, some clip, some clips of our Bible studies out there just so people could get, you know, get some clips. I'm not going to put the whole thing out because, you know, some things are people's personal business or or sometimes we're just reading the text. And I mean, who wants to watch videos of people just reading the text for like two minutes until the next question comes or the next topic comes. Right. So I'm going to start putting out little clips here and there. Um, other than that, I'm done, man. I don't know why I talk so much tonight. Uh, you know, hope, you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you guys are watching. You guys are blessed. And um, I love y'all, man. Bless you guys. Um, Steve said, are the Bible studies available on playback? Um, as I work at night, no, no. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to start putting out some clips. Um, but um, if there's something that we talk about for a long time and it's like 10 minutes long, 15, 20, which there has been, I'll put it up on YouTube and you'll be able to, to play it back there. I'm going to start working on that. So definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. Everything's going to be on there. You know, I don't really, I'm, uh, you know, unless it's a couple short clips or some quote graphics. I don't really, I'm not really going to do much on Facebook other than these lives, which we're only doing because, you know, we can't have our meetings physically yet, you know, but we plan on doing those soon. In, in Charlotte, if you're in Charlotte, we could, you know, you're definitely welcome to come. Um, Israel said, I can't speak highly enough of the Bible studies. Awesome, bro. Awesome, bro. My wife said, I love the Bible studies. Isaiah said, Bible studies are on point. Man, Steve said... Thank you for the preaching of corrective medicine. I have my, man, corrective medicine? That's, man, that's, that's deep. That's deep. Man, I appreciate you, Steve. Amen. All right. Love y'all, man. Y'all take care. All the links are down there. And I'll see you guys next time. If, if you can't come to the Bible studies, um, if you can't come to our meetings once we, when we start having them again locally in Charlotte, then, you know, until then, I'll be here on Facebook every Saturday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. OK, love y'all. Y'all take care. Y'all take care. All right. Love y'all. Bless you, Steve. Bless you, Roshni. I, I was I was going to exit on my laptop, but I forgot I'm on my phone. Love y'all. Take care.